Hello Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to answer a question from Nick, KD2UYZ. Uh, he asked this question, says, Hello Mr. Kastler, thanks to you and your videos I've gotten my technician license and am working on my general. And good luck to you with your studies there. I'm looking into purchasing the DX Commander Classic. Living in Queens, New York, my lot is small. My question is this. The antenna uses 360 degree ground radials. I can only run them front and back. Do you think this would be sufficient? Thanks, Nick, KD2, uh, UYZ. Well, Nick, uh, let's, let's just talk a little bit about radials, okay? The DX Commander is of that class of verticals that requires radials. You've got something that's fed at the bottom that sticks up. In the case of the DX Commander, it's sort of the equivalent of a fan dipole, except it's a fan vertical. And it's fed at the bottom, therefore there need to be radials. Now, there are other kinds of vertical antennas that are half-wave, electrically half-wave verticals that uh, are end-fed at the bottom. They use a little counterpoise uh, rather than ground loops and they take up a, a lot less space. One problem is you need to get them up about 10 feet off the ground, whereas a, a vertical with radials can actually be ground mounted and does quite well in that situation. Of course, you've got the safety issue with the radials. People can trip over them. So what some people do is that they, they use lawn staples and put those radials down and then the grass grows up over them and eventually they end up down at the bottom and mow right over the top of them. You'd never know. But you've got to be pretty careful to do that. Another way to do it is to take uh, a spade or something and dig a little hole and push that wire about an inch into the surface. You don't want to go more than two inches because otherwise they become grounding devices and not radials. Radials uh, act as sort of the other half of the antenna. So let's talk about radials. First of all, how long do they need to be when they're on the ground? The answer is pretty much anything, whatever you can make them, whatever you have space for. Second, do you need radials all the way around? The answer is no but. Okay, no you don't need radials all the way around, but the antenna will be slightly directional, slightly directional in the direction of the radials. So if your radials go to the east, your signal will go to the east. A little bit, not a huge amount. How long do the radials need to be? They don't. Uh, need to be very long. Uh, 10 foot radials, if you can get a bunch of 10 foot radials, um, it's often better than half as many 20 foot radials and so on. Um, emphasis on uh, quantity uh, is important. Uh, they don't have to be terribly long. Do the radials need to be tuned? No, but. <laughs> no, not if they're on the ground. But yes, if the base of the radial is about 10 feet in the air, then you would want two tuned radials for each band. That means quarter wavelength radials, taking into account the wire's velocity factor and everything. Um, so one on each side for each band. So you'd have 40, 20, 15, and 10. Although the... Um, the 40 meter radials often satisfy uh, the needs on 15 meters. The bands are very nicely harmonically related. It's a factor of three, so that makes it easy for antennas. Now, in your situation, if you put radials to the back of your lot and then radials to the front of the lot, you're fine. Now, can radials be bent around obstacles? The answer is yes, but you're going to see a very slight modification in the antenna pattern. Now, note this, that 
um, if you do bend some radials around something, uh, you're still getting the benefit of the radials. So go ahead and do bend a few around whatever objects for like coming up to the corner of your house. Well, a radial, you might have a radial here going straight, but a radial here can bend around and go that way. Now, uh, one thing to consider with radials, it is my personal preference. I'm not saying this is best practice. It is my personal preference to do uh, insulated radials. Now, when you do that, you've got to understand that the very end of the line where it's cut is the high voltage point on the radial. So pets, critters, um, children, neighbors, even yourself when you're doing your yard work um, can be exposed to the high voltage there. So one thing you can do if there are people around there, get a simple yellow, yellow, yellow wire nut and put that nut over the end of it. It actually screws on the end of it and uh, then go ahead and hide that down in the grass and that'll keep anything coming into touch with that uh, voltage at the end. Uh, it's RF voltage and uh, it can be quite a few volts. It's enough to get a little, quite a little zap out of. Okay, um, so now in terms of using your antenna when other people are using the backyard, take into account the fact that they're very close to the antenna. If you're operating on 40 meters or 20 meters, you're okay. But when you get up to 10 meters, you're starting to get to the knee of the curve where things really start to affect people and you'll want to keep the wattage uh, down for RF safety reasons. So I think that gives you just a little bit of an overview of radials and what you do with radials. Do I recommend radials for vertical antennas? Yes and no. Yes, for those that are designed to be, uh, that are uh, fed down at the bottom and are a quarter electrical wavelength high. Yes, I recommend radials. The more the merrier. And remember, more is better than longer. The more the merrier. The radials that I have on uh, my uh, uh, step IR, big IR antenna out there are um, variable length. Some of them are anywhere from 15 to 30 feet. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of 25 foot radials. Um, when I uh, took down my uh, big uh, super loop antenna, I cut it up into pieces, into radials that I put on the thing. One thing you have to keep track of with radials, which are usually copper, is that the base of the antenna is almost undoubtedly aluminum. So you need to use stainless steel hardware. Stainless steel is not perfect for stopping corrosion, but it's a much better solution than strapping copper directly to aluminum. Now, um, DX Engineering sells what they call a radial plate where it's got a whole bunch of holes in the plate where you can attach your radials with stainless steel hardware and then there is a strap from that to the uh, where it's connected to the ground there. That's uh, the method that I use for uh, the big IR out there. So radials, radials, radials. I hope that uh, covers a lot of aspects of radials. Go ahead and put out what you can. Enjoy that DX Commander. I've got a DX Commander that's half built. Unfortunately, it's out in the snow and just waiting for the snow to melt enough that we can rescue it from there and finish the build and do the testing. That is an antenna that does require radials. If you're looking for an antenna that does not require radials, take a look at the Cushcraft AV, Cushcraft High Gain. It's either High Gain or Cushcraft. AV, that's Alpha Victor dash 640, AV 640. That antenna enjoyed quite a vogue uh, three or four years ago, and it's a nice antenna, although it is quite a kit. It consists of over 200 parts, uh, but it's an all-band antenna from 40 on up. So there you go. When you have a chance, uh, take a look at dkassler.com slash um, support for different ways that you can help fund this channel and take a look 
uh, at, um, well, please take a look at subscribing too. And uh, for those who are wondering about my broken ankle, yes, I'm <laughs> going through that sort of thing again. I'll see a doctor again tomorrow on that. So I'll let you know on Thursday uh, at the live stream how that comes out. Until we next meet, 73.